and to truly believe there's hope. If it works for other people, it can most definitely work for you. And even if you had a bad experience, it might have not been the right time. So, you know, trying something new with a different provider can sometimes be helpful. But again, just understanding that there's definitely treatment options out there and that you don't have to to be stuck listening to your tinnitus. If you have tinnitus, one of the best things you could ask for is that your doctor has gone through tinnitus and can provide treatment to you knowing the day-to-day -day difficulties of what it's actually like. Today, we have a special guest on the Tribal Health Podcast, Dr. Jackie Smith, doctor of audiology and tinnitus expert on our team at Treble Health. Dr. Jackie, can you please share your own personal journey with tinnitus? Sure. So for me, my tinnitus started over 10 years ago, um, most likely due to chronic ear infections. Um, but today, you know, it's at a very low level. So um, it's something that doesn't, doesn't impact my day. But before, it was definitely something where you know, couldn't go, couldn't go a minute without hearing my tinnitus. What level of intensity was it if you could rate it one to 10 uh, when it was at its worst? You know, when I was sleeping, which I think everybody says sleep is definitely where they notice it the most. I would say that my tinnitus was about a 10 out of 10. When I was sleeping, my husband would say, oh, do you hear that? Um, I'm like, if it's not the ringing in my ears, <laughs> I don't really hear much around me. And so during the day, I'd probably say it was about a seven or eight out of 10. Wow. All right. So what was the tipping point or what really inspired you to do something about it? I mean, you said you're an audiologist. So you've had tinnitus for a number of years by this point, right? Tell us more details of the struggle, how it led to actually doing something about it, and then what you ended up doing. Yeah. So I was one of those audiologists who you would come into the ENT office and I would say, oh, well, I have it. It's fine. You'll learn to live with it. And then I had a patient who was probably the most severe tinnitus patient that I had seen where it really was impacting her. So I had a colleague who was a tinnitus specialist. She worked somewhere else and she just gave me some tips to help that patient. And so when the patient came in again, um, I put just a low level white noise into her hearing aid and she started to cry. She was so overcome with emotion because it was the first time that she, her tinnitus wasn't overpowering her. And I was thinking about it, but it was just, it was such a powerful moment for me. And so I started looking into it. I started chatting with my um, audiology friend who specialized in tinnitus and um, actually started to um, specialize in tinnitus myself. Um, joined a clinic um, that was just focused on on tinnitus. I kind of became my own first patient, if you will. And now after eight years of being a tinnitus specialist um, and seeing myself as an example and seeing other people go from it being extremely impactful to living their life as they were, did before, um, it's definitely made me very passionate about it. I love that. Well, I'm so grateful that you're working with tinnitus patients now as a doctor uh, and you yourself had improved it. So how much did your tinnitus improve through the treatment that you gave yourself? Yeah, so I did sound therapy. That's what I started with. So I didn't do any cognitive behavioral side of things at the very beginning. And the sound therapy itself, um, I, I did it for about nine months and it went from where I didn't have to have sound in my environment when I was doing notes um, or at night. Now I have two little kiddos and now I can hear them rustling around or I, I, you know, it's not, I, I know the tinnitus is still there, but it's not something that impacts me at all. So you, I can hear who's sneaking out of their beds. Um, I am working from home. There's nothing else uh, in my house and I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not even noticing my tinnitus. So greatly improved, especially sleep. When I added the cognitive behavioral side of things. So that's one thing that I really dove into um, the past few years. And that has definitely helped even more so. And what is that for those who don't know? Um, so I, the, it ranges. So there's mindfulness, there's deep breathing, there's um, body scans, progressive muscle relaxation, sensory bursts. So I do deep breathing during the day when I'm stressed. I do it more for stress more than the tinnitus, but that's what I used to do when the tinnitus was more bothersome. Um, progressive muscle relaxation as well as positive imagery for sleep. And then also during the day, I'll use um, like sensory bursts. So I use smell. Smell is definitely um, what helps. If I can't get to the, the smell, then just a mint um, or gum or something to help 
used as a distraction. I agree with that. And part of your story is that you've had tinnitus for years. Like one of the most common comments on YouTube, which has validity from you guys and who are listening, thank you, is Dr. Ben, a lot of the interviews you're doing with some of your patients or some of your patients from Treble Health, they have only had tinnitus for six months, 12 months, a year and a half. I've had tinnitus for 10 years. So my question for you is, how do you respond to someone who says, I've had tinnitus for many years? I don't think this will work for me. I think my biggest response to those people is what you just said. I know it works. We've seen it work. Oftentimes I ask, why do you think it won't work for you? Because it does. You know, research shows 80 to 85 percent of those going through a tinnitus retraining therapy program will note significant reduction in their tinnitus. So, you know, it's it's worth a try. There's lots of things that are out there that, you know, won't work for one person, but it works for another person. So even if you talk to someone and TRT didn't work for them. It doesn't mean that it's not going to work for you. They might have done it wrong. They might have not been consistent in their routine. They might have had a different source of their tinnitus. And so, you know, it's better to to use your own experience um, than than focus on on someone that it might not have worked for. That's a good point. Now, a lot of doctors, frankly, don't find or investigate what is the root cause of this patient's tinnitus. Therefore, it's hard for them to really treat it specifically according to the root cause. How do you approach that with your patients that you work with? The biggest thing when it comes to tinnitus is getting a very detailed case history. So that's where I start is asking questions because from other videos we have on the YouTube channel, we know that there are three main sources of tinnitus for about 80% of those who have tinnitus. And that's going to be cochlear, that's going to be somatic and central. For most patients asking questions, you, when was your last hearing test? Can you manipulate your tinnitus? What's your anxiety level around your tinnitus? Really diving into that will give me a better idea as to where does that patient fall. And to be honest, most people are going to fall in more than one category. So besides doing tinnitus retraining therapy, you might be doing more with, you know, a chiropractor or a dentist. Or I think Lisa recently um, was a story and she had migraines and she did massage along with TRT and that's what really helped her. So it might not just be a one-stop shop, but we're going to provide you with the tools that you need with getting that good case history and providing you with the right tools. Hey, just a quick interruption. Do you live in Northern California? Because on May 9th, I'll be in person in San Francisco for a live tribal health event. As you can see on the screen here, our last event in New York City was such a success. I loved meeting you guys, engaging with the community, and we offered some amazing private consultations with a tinnitus doctor on our team all for you at no cost. This is a unique opportunity to try the best tinnitus treatments that are available today, speak to a tinnitus doctor to identify what solutions are right for you, and come hang out with me in person for a fun event. So I hope to see you there. Check the link on the screen right now where you can reserve your spot in San Francisco on May 9th. I really hope to see you there. And you mentioned TRT for those who are listening. TRT refers to tinnitus retraining therapy. It's one of the core approaches that we use at Treble Health. We'll put a, a link on the top of the screen now for anyone who wants to learn more about that or schedule a consultation with our solutions team. Uh, find a link on the screen and sign up. Now, Dr. Jackie, why do some patients not reduce tinnitus? I want to expand on this. I want to take what you said and say, okay, if that's true, then it must not work for everyone though, right? So why does it not work for some people? I had a patient recently ask me that question and my answer was really about the effort that's put into it. So when I was talking to this patient, they were just coming from the gym. They have a routine, they're in a routine, and I knew that they would be a very successful patient going through our treatment because it takes the effort, it takes the consistency, it takes getting in a routine. And so for someone who doesn't have guidance, who doesn't have the right tools, it's a lot harder for you to be consistent and to be in a routine. So having a coach, having a specialist, having someone provide you, be there for you and get you, you know, to the end where your tinnitus isn't bothersome. I think it's just that time. It, it takes time. It's not a simple fix, but if you put in the effort and you're consistent about it, you're going to get everything out of it that our successful patients get out of it. Yeah, I would agree. Being consistent sound therapy, uh, consistent use of what we call CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy techniques, 
and a consistent sleep routine. In my opinion, if one can do all of those things and generally limit their stress and anxiety in their in their day to day, they're giving their brain and body a, a very good opportunity to reduce tinnitus because the process of reducing tinnitus it's not a surgery or a pill. It's actually a natural ability of the brain and the auditory system to reduce tinnitus. So we have to set up the environment, right? You mentioned you have children. Well, why do we invest in education? Because it's setting up the right environment for their brains to learn. This is our version of that with tinnitus treatment. We have to set up the environment with sound therapy, with daily cognitive behavioral or mindful strategies and with a good sleep routine. And that said, there is no 100% treatment for, for tinnitus, even if someone does put in effort and bring consistency. So just want to acknowledge those who might feel like they've given it their all, but still they're not there. And, and we have empathy for those folks. There's still things you can do in terms of coping, in terms of you know alternative approaches. So even those folks who are listening, we don't want them to give up hope by any means. Now, Dr. Jackie, I want to switch gears slightly to talk about common concerns that patients may have. Um, what are the most common concerns that you find talking to folks who are looking for help with tinnitus? I think one of the biggest concerns that people have kind of goes back to the root cause. So they might have some medical appointments pending. They may, you know, Google is is fun. You may have found us from Google, so it's a good, good and bad on there. Um, but, you know, you may have found Google and you're like, well, I really want to rule out that it's not TMJ or that it's not somatic or I haven't had a hearing test yet. So sometimes, it's, again, getting through that case history and making sure you have those medical appointments and the big medical things ruled out. There is so much online that oftentimes people may be skeptical about what's out there. They may have tried, you know, those quick fixes. And so now they're coming to see us. And it's kind of like, I'm not quite sure because I've tried all these other things for tinnitus and it, and it didn't help. And then, of course, you know, the financial aspect of it. So, um, you know, being able to financially move forward in any type of treatment when it comes to tinnitus. Mm, thanks for explaining this. Hopefully that helps some folks who are listening. Dr. Jackie, where is your tinnitus today? I mean, does it affect you day to day? Does it affect you falling asleep still? Tell us where you're at with your ears. No. I would say that... Before I started any type of treatment, my tinnitus, my awareness of my tinnitus was 100%. I mean, it was 24-7. It was always there. And then now I would say on a weekly basis, it's probably there about 5% of the time. And even when I hear it, I'm just kind of like, oh, yeah, I, I still do have it. But it's it's not impactful. So it doesn't keep me up at night. Again, I'm in a quiet house right now, which I'm not used to, but I don't hear my tinnitus at all. So the only time I really hear it is if it's completely, completely quiet or if I, you know, um, am sick. So sometimes if my ears get plugged, um, a few years ago I had the flu and my tinnitus went through the roof, but I was able to calm it down within, you know, five minutes because I, I understood what was going on. But I mean, it sounded like a fire truck was was in my ear, but within five minutes it was it was back down to where it was. So it's still around. I know. I know it's there. Uh, it's kind of like a mosquito bite. I just try not to to itch it. <laughs> I know that it's there, but it's just a red bump. Well, you're certainly staying active with your family and seeing patients with trouble health. How do you manage stress and keeping your tinnitus in check, making sure that stress or a bad night's sleep or life kind of ramps it up or spikes it up? Yeah. So my at night, I still use sound therapy. One, because uh, my kids use it. And so it comes through the monitor, but it's nice to have that. And then during the day when I'm really stressed, um, I, I still use deep breathing. So sometimes I don't even know that I'm doing it. So that's what I, I tell patients is when you get in that routine and you're consistent, you may not even notice you're using those cognitive behavioral techniques for other things. I recently was driving in the snow. I'm in the state of Colorado and it's very common. And I had my two kids. They were in the backseat. They were loud because we're a loud family. And my son, my oldest goes, what are you doing? I'm like, what do you mean? What am I doing? And he's like, you're breathing weird. I'm like, oh no, that's just me calming myself down. So I didn't even realize I was I was doing my deep breathing exercise uh, to help me during my winter driving. But, you know, those are the things that I, you know, continue to do. And sometimes I don't even realize that I'm doing them. What will be your final advice for those listening who want to get their tinnitus in a state that's maybe closer to where yours is now? I would say 
it, it's possible. We see it all the time. I think the hardest part is, especially with the internet, like I said, there's good and there's bad. And to truly believe there's hope. If it works for other people, it can most definitely work for you. And even if you had a bad experience, you know, sometimes you just need to be, it might have not been the right time. So, you know, trying something new with a different provider can sometimes be helpful. But again, just understanding that there's definitely treatment options out there and that you don't have to to be stuck listening to your tinnitus. Thank you, Dr. Jackie. For those who want to speak with Dr. Jackie or another one of our expert audiologists at Treble Health, you can sign up for a free telehealth consultation where we can get to know more about your history and explain some different solutions that are available, uh, including our program. Dr. Jackie, thank you so much for being here and sharing your knowledge. For folks who wanted to work with you specifically, uh, how can they find you? Through the Trouble Health website, you can always schedule a consultation that way, or you can call the support line and you can ask um, to speak with me as well. Amazing. Thank you so much. And we'll include the links uh, right here on the end screen here on YouTube. If you're listening, if you're watching on YouTube or uh, down below in the description, Dr. Jackie, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again. Thank you.